Hi, I'm Mike. Not sure what's going on with the weather, but it sure feels like winter here. And it's three degrees this morning. What happened to you guys? Uh, with a wind chill of minus 16. It's cold. And that not only affects me out here working in this weather, it also affects the animals. And today we dive into the pigs, taking a look at how they handle the cold weather and also getting them a new home inside the shelter, out of the wind and the cold frigid temperatures. It's all coming up today on our Wyoming Life. Yeah. It's a project list day and that means we tackle a job written down right up here on this list behind me. The list is as much uh, a living organism as anything on the ranch, and it's constantly growing and shrinking as we complete projects that are written on it, and we add more. Each Tuesday, we pick something off this list, and more often than not, the project that needs to be done picks us. The weather today is what gets us this project moved to the very top of the list, as we have some very cold piggies out in the corral hoping for some better weather. Now we can't control the weather, but we can get them a little bit of warmth and a new apartment in the barn. Thanks for coming along with me today. Please take a minute to subscribe, come along with us as we strive to make every video an adventure, inviting you to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. I love doing things on the ranch that I've never done before. And more often than not, that, that kind of project stems from the need to solve a problem. We've been raising pigs here on the ranch for the last few years, and over those years, the pigs have had many different pens, corrals, and even pastures. This year, we moved the pigs from a series of pens and a long shed to a bigger single corral where they have lived for the past few months. As we get out and start taking a look at this project out here, I'm gonna lose the hat. And Don, the beanie, because it is cold out there. And we're gonna go get to work. Outside, in the cold temperatures, the pigs seem pretty happy. In fact, I'm not sure what an unhappy pig looks like. It's hard to even tell what a cold pig looks like. They huddle together for warmth. And although they don't have much for body hair to keep warm, they do have a thick layer of fat. That layer of fat keeps them warm down to temperatures of 20 degrees below zero, and it's not uncommon to see steam rising off their bodies in cold weather. It's pretty easy to feel bad for animals outside in the cold until you realize that chickens have feathers to keep warm, cows have leather hides, pigs have all that fat, and while we'd quickly die of hypothermia long before an animal outside would even shiver, we do take advantage of their technology that they use to keep themselves warm, to keep us warm. From the first man who realized that a woolly mammoth blanket held the cold nights at bay, to you, under your goose down blanket, the lessons we learn from animals help us live better lives. And even the idea for insulation, that came from birds. You may not line your walls with feathers now, but rest assured, Somebody did. Hell, at some point, they probably tried the whole chicken. We all know that animals are better suited for cold weather than we are. But it's not a bad idea to try to make it a little bit easier on them. The cows have a shed where they can get out of the wind and the snow. Chickens have the chicken house. And pigs, pretty soon, will have their own apartment in the barn. The pig pen, as it sits now, has a nice shed. Underneath that shed, on the north side, is a wall. That wall is connected directly to the barn, and just a few feet from a stall that we don't use. An extra that was built in there long before our time, and it's mostly been used for overflow during calving. If we play our cards right, we can still have it for calving, and we can turn it into the entire area inside for a new place for the pigs to hang out. The first thing to do is to clean it up a little bit. This side of the barn is mostly used for storage of odds and ends, and they do tend to get spread out. These old stove pipes will come in handy for something someday, and we never throw away lumber. So after a bit of cleanup, we can make a plan for how 
we want to do this. Our goal is to cut a door between the outside shed and here. We need the pigs to be able to get into the stall and we want to have their water inside in order to make it easier to fill and easier to keep from freezing outside in the elements. We can start by removing some planks on the stall fence. These boards, once pounded free, will be repurposed on the side to keep pigs in where we want them. Although these boards were nailed before, we'll put them back in place with screws and level them, making sure that they're close enough together that the pigs can't escape. Then we can cut off the excess. Cold weather on batteries is a killer. DeWalt tools and camera batteries alike. So after a few changes, we get the trimming done that we need to. Once we've reworked our fence, then we drag in the water source for the pigs. We use a water tank for them and we put the water in it and nipples on the side that the pigs bite down onto and water flows right out of them. We found that this is the easiest system to keep thawing in the wintertime, simply just using a stock tank heater. Then it's time for bedding. We still have straw left over from the ranch roundup and if you rode on one of the hay wagons, this might be the bale you were sitting on. There's still a butt print in it, but nothing identifiable. Since these bales are pretty cold and frozen, we bring them all in and then we break them apart as much as we can, leaving the rest of the work to the pigs. Essentially, by spreading straw for bedding, you're just making a mess. Pigs are great at that, so why not let them do what they do best? Once we have the hay kind of spread out and water filling the tank, we can look into bringing our new tenants in. That requires making a door and figuring out where to make it. Outside, we can pick a spot between studs. I hope the pigs don't get much wider than that. And we start cutting. Once again, dealing with batteries, cold weather, frustration, and aggravation. After a trip back to the shop for more batteries and a few more changes, we finally create a rough opening, slightly bigger than a pig, and wait for them to come on through. And wait. And wait just a bit longer. But like most things around here, there always has to be a guinea pig. And the pigs, they want me to play that role today. So I'll bring some food with me. And after squeezing through myself, it's not really needed as our new neighbors come rolling in. I have a feeling this place is going to be run very much like a frat house. A lot of farting, some fighting, and everything to excess. I'm not really kidding when I say that I, I don't think I've ever seen an unhappy pig. We do everything we can to make sure that their lives are as good as we can make them while they're here on the ranch. The same thing as I do for any guest, because in reality, that's what they are. Every animal here on the ranch is our guest, even though some will never leave and some will die here. Is it really that much different than my life? Since I came to the ranch and we decided to stay, I knew this would be where I'd find my end eventually, someday. I like to say that we do everything we can to make sure that all of our animals on the ranch have only one bad day. That bad day may be the day that they leave the ranch never to return. But we hope that every day up until that point is just as good as we can make it. The same goes for us as well. Every day on the ranch is a treasure. The day you leave and you're never able to come back, that's the only bad day that any of us should have to endure. Even though we all know we have to. Thanks for bearing the cold with me today. It's super cool to solve a problem and do it in a way, although it makes sense, it never occurred to you until you actually sat down and looked at it. I had an email this morning that somebody is missing our weekly live streams and they asked me where they went. So I think I'll take a quick minute before my lips freeze off to remind everybody that our live streams, the uh, our, our uh, In the Pasture live streams, video podcasts and a bunch of behind the scenes stuff now has moved over to our other channel. It's called Beyond the Ranch. You can search for it. Check out the description uh, for the link. You can catch our weekly live stream there Sunday nights along with a whole lot more. So make sure you head on over and subscribe to that channel. 
I'm going to go inside and warm up a bit before another project calls my name. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. What are you guys doing back here? <laughs>